Grand Theft Auto kind of defined what we expect from open world action uh, genre, right? But what if you've already played every GTA game to date 42 different times? What if you want something a little different, but kind of the same? What is up everybody, Chaos here. Today we're gonna be looking at games that are like Grand Theft Auto, but different enough to keep you engaged from front to back until GTA 6 comes out. Now keep in mind, some of these are much closer to GTA than others, but all of these games take distinct influence from Rockstar's game design and their storytelling techniques. And if you're a fan of the GTA series, you will love these. So uh, let me know which of these you're gonna try first or you've already tried, drop a like. And let's start off with Saints Row 2 and 3. Now, Saints is in a slump right now due to the abysmal reboot, but don't let that distract you from the fact that the classic games are amazing. Saints Row 2 and 3 launched in 2008 and 11, respectively. It was an awesome alternative to Rockstar's open world mayhem fest. Saints Row started out as a pretty blatant GTA clone, but the sequels helped carve out its own identity until the series culminated with the over-the-top superhero parody in the form of Saints Row 4. In the middle was 2 and 3, the two games that most fans of the series consider to be its peak. Now, they still play obviously like a GTA-inspired open world action game, but they have their own personality. Compared to GTA, Saints is more comedic. It has more features that are wacky and stuff like that. The story is also way more outright comedic than GTA's usually dramatic timelines. Saints Row 2 and 3 are a great alternative to games like GTA 4 and 5, and I recommend playing them instead of the latest Saints Row game. I mean, I don't know. Watch Dogs. Now, the franchise debuted in May of 2014, while most people remember it for being a big fat liar in its E3 gameplay trailer, plenty of others have a fondness for it. It spawned two sequels. If you want a game that plays more like GTA, the original might be up your alley. He plays a hacker vigilante named Aiden Pierce on a quest for revenge against those who killed his niece. The open world is a fictionalized version of Chicago, and the gameplay was basically GTA 4, but you added hacking. Now, upon release, Watch Dogs was pretty hated due to it failing to live up to the monstrous expectations laid forth by Ubisoft's gameplay demo, but if you go back and play it with an open mind, it's actually pretty fun. There's also a number of mods available for the PC version that will help you get the experience closer to that, uh, well, to the now infamous demo. You can usually get it for under 10 bucks, and for that price, it's a good alternative. Just Cause 2. Now, it may be a bit on the older side, but like I said about Saints Row 2 and 3, I think this is the best in the series, and if you're looking for something closer to GTA, here you go. Plus, Just Cause 2 is widely considered to be the best in the franchise, so start here. Released in 2010, it's an open world action game set in a massive open world with somewhat loose story about a guy trying to overthrow a dictator and liberate an island. Now, you've got tons of weapons, vehicles, you can mess around with everything, you have your grappling hook, you can get creative with your traversal, your combat strategies, everything. The story takes a backseat to the gameplay, but that's okay and it's inspired by games like GTA 4 and Infamous, except for it's extreme. There's so much to do here. It's insanely fun to just roam around the open world, figure out your actual to-do list later. The tone and the story of Just Cause 2 are rather different from what you'd expect from a GTA game, but the gameplay is a natural progression of a Rockstar title, and I think if you're still putting hours into online on GTA, give Just Cause 2 a try. Pretty much every game in the franchise is worth playing, but if you purely want a GTA alternative, this may scratch your itch. Cyberpunk 2077, yes, I said it. Despite all the flack that Cyberpunk has gotten since its disastrous launch in 2020, it's a much better game now. It's actually really close to what we thought we were going to get on day one. Granted, the player base today is much smaller than it would have been if the game worked on day one, but whatever. It's a first-person open-world RPG set in a futuristic city, and you play as a mercenary getting to know the various factions. You carry out jobs to get the truth of your past out in order to save your own life. I know, super vague summary, but it's a very open-ended game with a lot of awesome things to do. When you're venturing around the game's world, it's easy to feel like you're playing a futuristic first-person version of GTA V. Now, despite its brutal reception at launch, it now has a 77% recent approval rating on Steam. The community is actually really passionate. It averages over 10,000 concurrent players on Steam alone, and this is a single-player game, so they did it. They revivaled it. Revivaled it? They revived it. Yes. LEGO City Uncover. Now, a man has fallen into the river in LEGO City. LEGO video games have been rather consistent throughout the years, and while they usually have some third-party IP to carry them, LEGO City Uncover is a completely unique concept and story from within the LEGO company, and I like it. He plays a superstar cop named Chase McCain as he tries to track down an escape crime boss named Rex Fury, and the open-world map is based on a number of real-world locations and cities. The gameplay is basically GTA made out of LEGOs. 
that's cool. You can pretty much do whatever you want. And the writing is top notch. It features tons of jokes and parodies. It, it launched like eight years ago as a Wii exclusive, but it did get ported. So there's plenty of ways to play it. And this game is a ton of fun. At number five today, Mafia Definitive Edition. It was one of the main GTA competitors back in the day. The original game launched in 2002, spawned two sequels, one of which was excellent and the other one wasn't. But there was a top-to-bottom remake of the original game released two years ago, and it may be one of the best open-world games to come out in the last few years, which is odd because hardly anybody talks about it. Set in a fictionalized version of Chicago in the 30s, follows the rise of a new crime lord. Basically, you take the gameplay of GTA and the tone of L.A. Noir, you've got Mafia 1 Definitive Edition. Overhauls of the original gameplay made it feel more modern, plus it adds a few new gameplay modes and features that both pay tribute to the original and improve upon them. Strangely enough, it was a very polarizing game with people seemingly loving it for being something fresh or despising it for being too close or too far from the original. You can't make everybody happy. You're not going to please everybody, but it is a really good game. Postal 4. Now, if you're someone who likes playing GTA just to see how much insanity you can cause, I present to you Postal 4. Yep. Most of you know about this series because of the ridiculous second installment that's widely considered one of the most offensive games ever made, but if you give it a try now, it's actually pretty quaint. Postal 3 was a complete disaster. The developers would rather not talk about that, but we got an official release of Postal 4, no regrets. The new game is basically Postal 2, but with way more gameplay options and a pretty decent open world map for you to explore. Yes, it's in first person, but Postal 4 honestly scratches a lot of the same itches as wandering around the GTA map does, especially when you start causing mindless chaos and watching the NPCs react in increasingly frantic and hilarious ways. Now, I never thought I'd be sitting here recommending a Postal game, but that's where we're at. Goat Simulator. (laughs) No, I'm not kidding. I know, it's one of the weirdest games ever made, but if you start playing it, you'll never stop. Who's hyped for Goat Simulator 3? Like the name suggests, you're a goat. You play as this invincible and poorly animated goat as you run around an open world city and you just try to break stuff. The physics are broken, the ragdoll mechanics are hilarious, and there's so many bugs that the developers just never patched them out. It gave the game more character. It's basically what would happen if you play GTA with an invincible goat. For that, it's incredible. The map is just like something you'd see in a GTA 5 knockoff. The gameplay is just ridiculous ridiculous enough to be fun. Plus, it's available on Game Pass. So go try it. Be a goat. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Now, Yakuza is one of the most popular RPG franchises of all time. It seems like every new installment gets more ridiculous. If you played any entry in the series, you know what I mean. These games are unpredictable. One minute you'll be driving around the city hunting down some serious criminal, and next you'll be participating in some random minigame you'd expect out of a Nintendo game. Released in 2020, this one follows a brand new protagonist and a brand new story, so you won't be left out if you never played the series. Now, unlike most open-world action games, Yakuza Like a Dragon features real-time turn-based combat. No I didn't stutter. Let me say that again. Real-time turn-based combat. It's both real-time and turn-based at the same time. And the only way to understand it is to see it for yourself. It's a unique game. It's fun. Give it a shot. You You won't regret it. And at number one today, The Godfather. Did I say it? I didn't even sound like it. Before there was Grand Theft Auto, there was The Godfather. Kind of. The movie debuted in 72, and it's in a resurgence right now. One of the greatest films of all time, too. After the GTA franchise exploded during the early 2000s, Somebody at EA realized there was a fantastic idea sitting right in front of them. The GTA clone based on the most famous crime movie of all time. Released in 2006 for the 6th and 7th generation consoles, despite being a pretty blatant copy-paste of GTA, it's pretty good. The story was an interesting spiderweb of characters and plot lines that both intersect with the 1972 movie and they expand upon it with new locations and conflicts. The Godfather was a critical and financial success and even got a simpler sequel simply titled The Godfather Part 2. But this one wasn't nearly as good as the first. If you still have your PS3 or Xbox 360, or perhaps you have a PS2 emulator, go give it a try. It's worth a shot, especially since you're waiting another five years for GTA 6. There you have it. Those are games that are kind of like GTA. If you're bored with GTA and you want something different but kind of the same, let me know if you guys enjoyed it. <laughs>